Welcome to Josh's Frogs. I'm Lori and I'm going to be talking to you today about crested gecko setups. So this tank right here, this is an 18 by 18 by 24. I'm going to recommend this size for an adult crested gecko. This one right next to me is not quite the tank I intended to use because I couldn't find one, but it's pretty much the same thing but a little smaller. This is a um, 12 by 12 by 24 I believe. Um, it is the paludarium one, but it'll work just fine. I'm going to recommend this for our babies. All right, so first off, we're gonna wanna put some substrate in. So I have some here. It is our bio bedding. You could also use our cocoa select. It is um, natural materials made of cocoa husk and sphagnum moss, all that good stuff. Um, it'll help hold humidity for them, which is important. Where they come from is the New Caledonia regions, um, which is Action Island near Australia. So they like it a little humid. Whoa, that's a little dusty. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. Get in there. All right. Spread that around a little bit. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the bigger one. So pardon me, just gotta come over here. There we go. Ugh. Now that we have our bedding in, um, I like to also provide them with a little bit of leaf litter. It gives them a little bit of shelter if they choose to hang out on the ground. And sometimes you may find your gecko doing that and they may do that for several reasons. One, if your tank is not humid enough, they might bury themselves to try and stay humid. Um, if they are breeding, females will bury themselves about three to four inches in the substrate. And they do that because they actually lay their eggs in the dirt. Um, so if you ever do like monthly cleaning and you know that your gecko has bred, you just wanna be gentle when you're stirring up your dirt so you don't harm any of the eggs. But they also do help hold in humidity, these leaves. So if you're struggling with that, it would be a good idea to put some in. So next I have some cork bark which works great as hides. Some of them are hollowed out. Um, some of them are just actual pieces of slab. That works fine too, whatever you prefer. So I'm gonna set mine up kind of like this. They are an arboreal species, which means that they do like to climb. So you wanna provide lots of climbing space. And then I also have some live plants. Um, you can use real or fake, it doesn't really matter. I personally prefer live plants because I, I think they look better and you know it's kind of closer to what they would naturally have in the wild anyway because they'd have some plants to hide themselves in. Gives nice little decor to the place. I'm gonna put this one like right here. Just kind of drape it a little bit. And then this one, I'm gonna put back here. Whoops, that one's backwards a little bit. And then this one, I might even just kind of stick it right there. Yeah, that looks nice. This cute little friend. Next, um, I'm going to put in the feeding ledges. You can either provide a little cup like this and a little piece of paper, or honestly, just these work just fine too. Um, and then these actually stick pretty well right on the side of the wall, just like that. And then I do have another dish for you that is one that goes on the bottom, and this is a dual feeder, so you can put your water in here and your little cup of food, stick it right in there. And you can put it here, right down in the bottom. 
And even though these guys don't typically drink water from a dish, I think it's still wise to provide one anyway in case they get dehydrated. So I'm also going to stick this right in here. So I was talking about misting and watering and such. We have some dechlorinator. It's smart to do so to mix it up in your um, water. That way it makes your tap water safe and drinkable for your creatures. And when it comes to misting, I would recommend doing maybe twice a day, like once in the morning, once at night. Um, that's my routine for what I do here and also uh, what I do at home. So notice how I'm spraying the glass. That is because they're going to drink the water droplets off of the glass. In the wild, they would be doing this off of leaf litter and plants. So it's not even a bad idea to spray the plants a little bit too. And then same thing over here. Give it a little spritz. Ta-da! Now, of course, the substrate, it is a little dry, but you will want to hydrate it. And you kind of want it to look almost like chocolate brown. And you don't want it sopping wet. You want to be able to squeeze out all the excess water until no more water comes out when you squeeze it. That is the perfect consistency for their substrate. Now, uh, for their food, I'm going to demonstrate real quick um, how to make it. It is Pangea and it is a fruit supplement mix. It also does have insect protein, but you mix up two parts, one part uh, powder and two parts water. Um, and I say probably the consistency would be maybe about like ketchup, maybe a little thicker than ketchup is perfect. So I'm gonna make some back here real quick. I just gotta open this up. Something that's easy to do is I take my cup I take just a little bit, just like that, because you don't need a whole lot. A little goes a long way. And I'm gonna add my dechlorinated water to it. It looks a little muddy at the moment, but that's all right, because you're gonna wanna stir it up, just like this. And make sure you stir for a little bit, because sometimes it can get a little clumpy on you. I would say maybe just a tiny bit more water. I personally just kind of eyeball it, but they do have the uh, instructions for it on the back. So if you feel like you gotta read the instructions, go for it. <laughs> Doo -doo -doo. All right, that looks good. That's a good consistency, sweet. And then I'm gonna pop it right in here for the geckos. And another thing I have that is also important, especially if you plan to do a bioactive setup, which is what we're doing here, I'm going to recommend that you use springtails. And the reason why springtails are important is because they are like nature's little janitors. They clean up all the messes that your geckos are gonna make. And they make it so the substrate, you know, has nutrients, is viable for the plants, and overall healthy for your animal. So, I'm just gonna unscrew the cap. I'm just gonna pour just a little bit in. I like to pour just in like two of the opposite corners just so they have two different spots to kind of shimmy into the dirt. And that black stuff in there is charcoal. All right, awesome. And then next, I have a little hydrometer here. And this is gonna tell me um, how humid their enclosure is. So it does come with this little sucker cup and you can just stick it down in the cage somewhere. So I'm just gonna put it towards the back because that's probably where the water's gonna hit the most. And then the exoterras actually have these little notches here that you can put the wires through and that way you can take your screen top. It also has these little things that slide so you can uh, feed your little tools through that as well. And it sits right on top just like that. All right, there we go. 
So then you can always just pull it out from the side or put a little piece of tape or something, stick it to the side of your enclosure to make it easy to see. Some people will even put this whole thing in there too. That's fine, it's up to you. Um, and lastly, the geckos. So after you have everything set up, just like I have here, your home is now ready for your gecko. Um, first, I'm gonna start with my favorite breeder male. He is beautiful when he's all flamed up. And in crested gecko terminology, flamed up means that their colors are darker, more vibrant. Come here, buddy. And take a look at this. Isn't that a beautiful animal? I love working with these guys every day. They have just such a great personality. They're very handleable. They're very docile. They're not gonna get away from you. They are awesome little guys. And they feel like velvet, they're so soft. So this guy right here, I'm gonna put him in this tank over here. And again, this is our um, 18 by 18 by 24 Exoterra. This is perfect for an adult crested gecko. And that's what I have here. Um, so this is where he's going to go for now. All right, little guy. Ta-da! There you go. Check that out. Oh. <laughs> Sweet. Oh, look out. Come here. There you go. All right, and the Exoterra does have these neat little latches that swivel out. So it's kind of nice to be able to open up the top completely if you need to get in there. And I have an extra special treat for you guys. This is a project that I'm very proud of that we have finally started to see results with. And that is the Lily White Morph of Crested Geckos. So here I have a baby. Um, it was produced here by one of our breeders who is in fact a lily white male. And this is one of my absolute favorite morphs. They're so gorgeous. All right, little guy, come here. So this is my special treat to you guys for hanging out this long and you know, supporting the company. We're able to jump into projects such as these. This is a very sought after morph with crested geckos and I am just stoked to be able to share this with you. Um, very soon, I can't say when exactly because you know it takes time to raise these guys, but <laughs> we do plan to have them available for sale in the future. So now that he's in there, I'm gonna go ahead and just slide this on. And again, the little swivels. And of course, the last feature after everything is set up is going to be your lighting system. What I have here is an Exoterra um, dual light hood. And this sits right on top of your Exoterra. You can either have it here in the back or you can have it closer towards the front, wherever you prefer. Um, it has a UVB bulb on one side and the other is for heat. Now, UVB is important because it allows their bodies to produce calcium and you know, with that calcium, they can grow healthy bones. It will help prevent MBD, which is metabolic bone disease. And obviously nobody wants that. And then for heat wise, I'm going to suggest a low wattage bulb uh, there's a lot of discourse out there whether or not crested gecko should have heat or not. Um, they do like lower temperatures, so they're not going to need something blazing hot. They are a tropical creature. So you don't want to go anything over 80 degrees. Um, they kind of like it between mid-70s to 80s. And yeah, I think that wraps up for your generic basic crested gecko care. Thanks so much for watching this video. Here at Josh's Frogs, bringing nature to your doorstep is more than just our mission, it's our passion. 
We want you to have the most successful experience possible. So we're going to be here for you before, during, and after your purchase. Whether that's with our captive bred animals, plants, insects, or the wide variety of their care products on our website. You always have access to our dedicated customer service team, on-site nature experts, hundreds of free articles via our blog, and many more videos right here on our YouTube channel. So be sure to subscribe. We're always happy to help. Just shoot us an email or give us a call. You can find all of this information and more at joshesfrogs.com. Thanks again and see you next time.